Hey, so in this video, we're going to look at clusters, how to apply a cluster to some polygon mesh, and then how to edit the cluster by painting weights. And we'll also add a control curve. And then at the very end of the video, I'm going to show you the applications for it. So you want to watch it right till the end. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is just create some polygon mesh to apply a cluster to. So I'm just going to go to my polygons tab here on the shelf, and we're just going to create a polygon plane. Scale it up a little bit. I'm just going to bring it above the the grid so we can see it better. And I'm going to tighten up the mesh. So I'll head over to the channel box on the right here and I'll just highlight these subdivision width and height and we can middle mouse button drag just to tighten up that mesh and give it lots of polygons. Just so that when we deform this polygon surface it'll deform nicely and we won't get it. We won't have a lot of faceting. The next thing we'll do is change our menu set. I have it on animation right now. So I'm going to change it to rigging so that we can get the deform menu. Under the deform menu, you'll see clusters here. Now I don't want to apply it yet. So we need something to attach the clusters to. And we're going to attach the clusters to the, the vertices on this mesh. We'll right click and choose vertex. All right, so now we can select our vertices. If you just drag a box over anywhere on the vertices, you will select a whole group of them. I want to attach a cluster to the whole things, so all the vertices. So we'll select all of them. And now we can go to deform and cluster. So as soon as we do that, if you look right in the middle, you'll see a little C. It stands for cluster, and we have a cluster on this thing. If we select that cluster and we move it around, it'll take the whole mesh with it. I just want a, a specific area to move. We're going to have to paint cluster weights. So to do that, we'll go back to deform and go all the way about two-thirds down under paint weights. Right where it says cluster here, we'll click on that. You'll see in your toolbar on the left, paint cluster weights icon. If you double-click that, you'll get the attributes for it. Now there's a whole bunch of things you can do here. You can adjust the brush, uh, paint attributes. Under paint attributes, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that it's on replace. And if you look at your brush size, we can increase that brush size a little bit by going to radius under brush. You can just drag that up a little bit just to make the brush bigger. And you can keep adjusting that up and down as you go. All right, so let's bring up our outliner. We want to be able to select that cluster, and you can see we have our plane and our cluster. So we can select both of those. I'm just gonna keep that handy over here. You can see that the entire thing is white. So that means that the entire plane is being affected by the cluster. So what we want to do is just have some of the vertices come with the cluster. So what I want to do is just have a point in the middle come up with the cluster. So I'm going to start painting the edges. And you, at first you can go really rough. You can increase your brush size. And you can change your brush profile too. Okay, so now if I select the cluster, we'll use our move tool, just move that cluster up a little bit you can see what happened there. So I'm going to leave it, I'm going to move it up and just leave it there just so that I can paint the mesh in the desired shape that I want it to be when I move the cluster. So again, we have to select the mesh, go back in the toolbar and select the paint cluster weights icon. And now we can just paint this out. So I'm going to slide my brush size down a little bit. See when I paint this, it all just goes down. You can change how, how strong the, the brush is by changing the value here under paint attributes. So right now it's at, um, 0.194, we're just going to change it to, we'll just change that to 1. Then you just do a little test, and right now that's a little bit too much. Okay, so we can leave that value there, and if another way to change the strength of the brush is just to turn the opacity down here. Right, under, right where your brush sizes are, the bottom slider, we can just drag that right down to about a third. And then when you paint, it doesn't go down as much, and you can that way you can make smaller changes. So just work really rough, and then you can smooth it out after. I'll show you how to do that. So basically, I want to have the cluster just pull one little point up. Okay, so now we're working really rough and it's just it's really bumpy. So I'm just going to go ahead and smooth that. We can click on smooth. We want to drag the opacity all the way up now because we want the smooth function to have the full effect. And I can also increase the size of my brush a little bit just so I cover more area. So now if I select the cluster, we can use our outliner and I move it around. It just brings that one little point up. So it's nice to be able to paint, paint cluster weights just to define the area that they come with the uh, the cluster. And then we can use this cluster and attach control curves to it to control any kind of area on our character that we're using a cluster for. So I'm just going to set these back to zero and the cluster goes back to its default position where it was created. It still works. But for now, we're just going to leave it at zero. So now I'm going to create a control curve and attach it to the cluster so that we don't have to select the cluster all the time when we're, when we're animating. So I'm just going to go to my curve shelf and we'll just use a, a simple circle for a control curve. So just place the control curve in a convenient place for easy selection. So now we're going to constrain the control curve to the cluster. First we want to select our control curve and then we want to select our cluster 
and let's go to constrain and parent. Let's go to the option box. You just want to make sure that all your translates and your rotates are selected and maintain offset is checked and then we'll click apply and close it up. So now that we've done that, when we select our control curve, you'll see that the cluster turns pink and that means that there's a connection there and the control curve now, now controls the cluster. So say we were using this on a character or on any, any kind of object that you're using it on. You can now go ahead and hide the cluster. If we go to our outliner, we can select the cluster and we can hide it. We can turn visibility off here just by typing in zero or you can just hit control H on your keyboard. So we can completely hide the cluster. Now you just use the control curve to, uh, to deform your geometry. Let's take a look at the practical uses of this. All right, so here I have my superhero character. Clusters are used a lot on characters' faces, usually for things like eyebrows, just so that we can articulate facial expressions. Uh, most character rigs have clusters around the mouth, usually quite a few. I've seen some characters with probably 30 or 40 clusters around the mouth. This one's a little bit more simplified. Clusters are hidden, but each one of these controls has its own cluster that controls an area of the mouth. And there's a cluster for each eyelid as well that are being used to get the character to blink. So the clusters are being rotated here. Clusters are very handy for uh, rigging characters' faces. And you can pretty much use them for any reason that you need them for. And that's it for this one. I'll talk to you later.